to this afternoon's recognition ceremony in honor of the late Richard W. Keith. It is a pleasure to have everyone present, all three branches of government, the executive, legislative, and judicial, to honor all the hard work and notable contributions that Dr. Fee has shared with our Valley community. Today's recognition will include from the Lieutenant Governor, the Ancient Order of the Chamorro Award, which consists of men and women not native to Guam, who have contributed substantially to the betterment of the people of Guam, and have demonstrated real and sympathetic interest in the people of Guam, its history, cultures, traditions, and community concerns. We'll also have a judicial resolution by Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Guam. We'll also have a legislative resolution by the 36th Guam Legislature, and a certificate, uh, excuse me, a certificate of appreciation and commendation from the Post Commission. At this time, I'd like to recognize the presence of the Honorable Joshua Tenorio, Segundo Megalon Guam, Lieutenant Governor of Guam. I would also like to recognize the presence of the Honorable F. Philip Carbolito, Chief Justice, Supreme Court of Guam. Thank you. From the 36th Guam Legislature, joining us today, we have the Honorable Talina Cruz Nelson, Senator. She's here on behalf of the Honorable Mary Camacho Torres, main sponsor of the legislative resolution, and the Honorable James Moyley, Senator. From the Guam Police Department, we have Major Manny Chong, Commander of Troops, on behalf of the Chief of Police. From the Guam Regional Transit Authority, Mr. Selva Balta, Director. From the Department of Youth Affairs, Mrs. Lai Brennan, Director. Uh, from the Peace Officer Standards and Training Post Commission, Mr. Robert D. Camacho, Post Executive Director and Deputy Director, Department of Corrections. Also joining us, we have Mr. Vince S. N. Perez, Post Chairman and Chief Guam Customs and Quarantine Agency. Also from the Judiciary of Guam, Ms. Christina Berry, Administrator of Court. This is Hannah G. Arroyo, Clerk of Court, Supreme Court of Guam. This is Danielle Rossetti, Clerk of Court, Superior Court of Guam. And Ms. Don Bloss, Judicial Education. Additionally, from the Governor's Office, people who have worked very closely with Dr. Fee, Legal Counsel Sophia Santos Diaz. We have Mrs. Josephine Hoping. Cepeda from the Lieutenant Governor's Chamber. And Mrs. Jessica Cruz from Central Files. Thank you for joining us today. And also our guest of honor today, the family of the late Dr. Richard Fee. Mr. James and Virginia Fee, along with their children, William and Adelaide. Ms. Danielle Fee. Uh, Mr. Andrew Fee and Ms. Ashley Fee. Thank you for joining us. And to all our distinguished guests who are also joining us virtually on Zoom and Facebook Live, welcome. At this time, I'd like to give the floor to Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio for his remarks. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to welcome um, the children of Dr. Fee, and I also, of course, want to give my regards to your mom, uh, who is not present today. Um, and uh, maybe I wanted just to recap um, the first time I met your dad, I was uh, at the Judiciary of Guam. Um, I was in a job interview. I was on a panel, um, and I think Hannah was on the panel with me, Danielle also, and we were interviewing candidates for the Judicial Educator position, which was a new position that was created by Chief Justice Carbolito that was designed to really focus on um, the growth potential um, and the career tracking of the employees at the Judiciary. And so uh, I didn't know him. Uh, we read, of course, his background. Um, and he gave one of the best job interviews I've ever um, sat through in my career. Um, the amount of information, the wealth, his presentation style, um, his humor, and he did have a very good sense of humor. Um, he gave us an opportunity um, he presented, he, there would never be a candidate at that stature at that time 
had it not been for a personal decision he and your mom made to move back, I think for the, is it the second or the third time back to Guam um, in order to um, be here, be close to Asia, but also be back to an island that um, he helped shape the careers of many, many people. Over the course of that interview and later through my um, interaction with him at the judiciary, he did so many phenomenal things. When you create an issue, he immediately can come up with a very structured strategy. Um, the big issue that we had was the legislature passed the uh, uh, Peace Officers uh, Standards Training Act, the Post Commission. And we wanted to make sure that our marshals and our probation officers were poised to comply with the law. This man uh, went in and he profiled every single one of the, I think that we had 120, maybe that's my recollection, CJ, 120, 140 law enforcement officers. He, this is where I started interacting with Bob Camacho, who was the chair of the post commission when he was the chair of the airport. Um, um, I'm sorry, when he was chief of the airport police. Uh, and he came in with a very um, structured proposal. It was very groundbreaking out of the box. Uh, and then we had him work with Pete Roberto and Dr. Okada at the, University, at the community college that came in with the proposal. This is nothing that we budgeted for, but we found it. And we had a, um, a uh, very rapid, uh, very structured, uh, but a very um, intense academy, law enforcement academy in which Dr. Fee went and got all of our attorneys that were working to be faculty. Uh, in fact, he opened the doors for many to become faculty at Guam Community College for the later um, um, law enforcement academies. But he was a real, um, he seized the moment. He could um, foresee things coming. He had a very good way of preparing. So I had heard that he retired um, again, because I think he's, uh, he's retired many times. Um, in that uh, friendship I have with him, I also knew that he had worked with Sel Babalta over there um, for, in the Air Force um, prior to the court, uh, profiling and helping service members track there. And, uh, and Senator Nelson knows this because she's in the service, tracking their career paths, making sure that they were advancing in their military careers also. So this person that, that uh, did a lot of things in the course of the interview, we found out that he also provided the Guam Department of Education a unique opportunity to resolve a longstanding legal problem with shortage of special education um, professionals. Um, and he did this. In fact, uh, somebody else that interviewed for that job who we later hired was his student. So it just was so clear um, that he had spent so much time nurturing um, talent on this island. And then after this, this retirement, of course, we see his uh, op-eds, his letters to the editor. Of course, he, was, he loved politics uh, and policy, as I learned from the, um, from the ceremony from, uh, your, um, from your eulogy, James. Um, he had a, a knack for paying attention to what was happening and he wanted to contribute in his way. So the executive branch found a unique opportunity to also ask him to help. Um, we had communicated with Dr. Fee, we communicate periodically. And then um, when he taught, told me that he was getting bored at home, I told him, I said, well, this is, ex we totally, I need you. He had already been experienced um, with our law enforcement officers at the court and post compliance. He knew that law in and out. He knew what it took to get people qualified. So I asked him, can he lend that service with the police department and with the post commission to help the executive branch evolve this work? 
And for the short period of time that we had him, because he, he was employed during the pandemic, right? Uh, he managed to reach out and speak to every single training officer in every single branch of law enforcement. He mapped out a whole strategy. Um, he went and did a critique on the salary structures of our law enforcement officers and what it should take for us to not only recruit, but to retain them and to uh, provide opportunities for Guam's best to be in law enforcement. He, le he left us a roadmap, a very good strategy that we are already actually now in the process of using. In fact, the basis of his product is what our Guam Department of Administration is using in a current active um, pay study going on for law enforcement officers, which we expect to be able to act on in the next few months. So um, I mentioned this because although his life in, on earth is relatively short, I would say in the big scheme of things, but boy, his legacy reaches into this community uh, much more than I could say for others. He really has excelled. He is a local Guam resident with a passion for work and a passion for the island. And even though he has passed this world, I can guarantee you that his imprint and his um, talent is going to be far reaching in this government for, the, for even decades to come. So I just wanted to take this time to thank all of you. I know, Ray, I know that uh, you have moved around considerably uh, with your parents, following um, their passion for life and following um, a passion for uh, careers. But um, there's no question that in the end, um, this place, Guam, our island was so fortunate to have him as part of our extended family and part of how we want to improve the services that we provide to the people of Guam. So on behalf of our governor and the people of Guam, um, it is our distinct honor to provide him the highest recognition period there is to give to a non tremoral That's the highest honor that any governor, any administration can give. And it is with recognition of the, the amount of work and foresight and care that he had for our island. So thank you very much for being here and uh, please give our regards to your mom. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. At this time, I'd now like to give the floor to Chief Justice F. Philip Carlito for his remarks. Uh, thank you. Um, this turned on. Okay. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor. And uh, much of my remarks and recollections uh, is in parallel with uh, what the Lieutenant Governor has just mentioned. Uh, but for the record, I'm gonna go ahead and extend these remarks because uh, as you've mentioned, he's made a, a substantial contribution um, uh, to the island and in particular, in our case, the, the judiciary. And so several years ago, uh, we had a vision of creating a position within the judiciary, which we plan to call the judicial educator. And we have a successor in Don uh, Seguenza Blas, uh, who is now our judicial educator at the judiciary. Uh, we, we thought uh, it would serve a great benefit to our operations to have a person on staff dedicated to ensuring our employees have access to necessary training and learning opportunities to enhance their careers and maximize their potential. In 2015, as the Lieutenant Governor has pointed out since he was the administrator of the courts, we were finally ready to advertise a position and seek applicants. After interviewing certain several candidates uh, through multiple rounds of interviews, one candidate clearly stood out. And I believe the words of the interview panel, um, Lieutenant Governor, were something to the effect of his qualifications are in a whole other stratum, as you have uh, adequately described. 
In 2016, Dr. Richard Fee became the judiciary's first judicial educator. Although we had a general framework in mind about what that position would look like, Dr. Fee truly embraced the job, made it his own, and took it to the levels beyond our expectations. He was instrumental in opening our Judicial Education Center, which has grown into a state-of-the-art learning center used by countless groups over the years, both from within our court and among our stakeholders, to hold training, testing, orientations, and many other important educational activities. With his vision, we implemented the Judiciary's Learning Management System, or LMS, which was an automated system that we could create, track, monitor, and report on educational training programs for all of our employees. In a short time with the courts before his retirement in 2018, Dr. Fee created and launched many new training courses, some offered in partnership with local institutions of higher education, and some taught by in-house faculty, comprised of our law enforcement personnel, as the LT has described, our attorneys, our therapists, and other professionals whose teaching skills Dr. Fee helped hone. Among the courses are the onboarding program for new employees, which includes specific classes on the introduction of the, to the judiciary, anatomy of the trial, HR policies, court culture, code of conduct, social media, the LMS, occupant emergency plans, active shooter, equal employment opportunity, Americans with Disabilities Act compliance. We were truly blessed to have Dr. Fee on staff at a time when the law changed, again, requiring all local law enforcement personnel to meet certain fiscal fitness and educational bench benchmarks. Dr. Fee, who many of you know, had a special place in his teacher's heart for supporting law enforcement, as the LTS described, was a key factor in coordinating employee training opportunities, such as the Criminal Justice Academy, a partnership between the judiciary and the Guam Community College to ensure, to ensure fulfillment by judiciary law enforcement on the new academic uh, requirements of the Peace Officer Standard Training or Post Commission, as uh, it is commonly referred to. A partnership between the judiciary and the University of Guam to establish the Master of Public Administration cohort program, the occupant emergency planning and trade in active shooter response and training on cultural sensitivity. He had a knack for harnessing the talent of our judiciary professionals and turning them into skilled faculty. And he also had a knack for forging partnerships with outside educational institutions when necessary. He brought the best of himself to all that he did. And he brought out the best in everyone he mentored, everyone he worked with, everyone lucky enough to have been a part of his life. And so I just would like uh, to um, recognize all of the family members present here today. And on behalf of the judiciary, I see Justice Torres, who is um, um, on the uh, virtual screen there. Uh, for and, and we thank you for sharing your father and, and Julie, your mother, uh, we thank you for sharing your husband and with the grandchildren here with us. We are so blessed to have had him as part of our familial Kopti. And so on behalf of the members of the Judicial Council, the Judicial Officers, and all of our Judiciary employees, uh, we just want to extend our deep appreciation for Dr. Richard Fee and the many contributions he made to the judiciary and the impact that he has had on judicial education and training and the professionalism uh, that he has left and we continue to benefit from in his uh, brief time with us at the judiciary. And um, I extend on behalf of uh, all the judiciary employees, our deepest condolences and prayers and um, Duncan and Seduce Marcy, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief Justice.
I'd like to call upon Mr. Tiku Bukon, who will assist me in reading the ancient order of the Chamorai, which will be done in English and Samoan. Ancient Order of Chamorai, posthumously presented to Richard W. C. PhD, in recognition of your most valuable contribution. Ancianu na inetbin itamarai, despues di finata i defunto, ma presenta si Richard W. V. PhD, gi inabiben et mas guaguan na nanaimu. Whereas Richard W. V. PhD is distinguished by his exceptional service and accomplishments as a longtime teacher, administrator, and college professor in the fields of special education, deaf education, and professional development in the United States, Guam, Australia, Hong Kong, and the Philippines. Como si Richard W. V. PhD, Madestengi Ginen Yisasangi Nasibishonia, Ten Kinemplenia Como Hagas Maestru Administrador, Ten Professor Kolehu Gihalam Sohetan Espeshot Na Education, Tanganga Education, Ten Enadolentin Professional. Giestantos Unidos, Guahan, Australia, Hong Kong, Tenny Philippines. Dr. Fee has been a key figure in the evolving landscape and special education on Guam and greatly contributed to the contemporary development of special education services and programs, which have positively promoted the growth of Guam's children with disabilities and supported their families. Dr. Fee was instrumental in modernizing the special education program of the School of Education at the University of Guam and revamps the program's capability to graduate dozens of special education teachers every semester, many of whom are employed full-time at Guam schools. As chairperson of the university's special education program, Dr. Fee's contributions in recent years alone have led to over 100 students receiving their full education, teacher certification, and graduate degrees in special education. Golf and Patanti, Natal Talsi Dr. P, Gi E Menman Tilaika, Yanatan Espeshot, Na Education Gi Ita Guahan, Ta Mega Yana Inya, Para E in a Delantan Set Bishon, Espeshot, Na Education, Zen Pugraman, Paku, the Temple, Ni in a Bansa, Gi Menale, Imena Fluman, Imaninuta, Na Famago and Gi Ita Guahan, Zen Senapoti Familia Niha. Sumano si Dr. Fee gi i menin weben i programen espeshot na edukasyon gi halam i eskwelen edukasyon gi it gi Universidad Guahan daha tutuhon gi nwebi inenet sinyan i programa para ugraduva put du sena i maestrin da maestrin espeshot na edukasyon kala semestri negai i men menepleha gi eskwelen Guahan siha. Dr. Fee also, or he has also served as the judicial educator at the Judiciary of Guam. He was responsible for administering education for judges and 450 court employees at the Judicial Education Center, and additionally oversaw professional development programs in a building where zealous advocacy was heard throughout its courtrooms. Dr. Fee advocated for the average employee by challenging management to place resources in workforce development. For the military community, Dr. Fee served as the base education advisor at Anderson Air Force Base, where he assisted more than 3,000 airmen in completing professional development requirements and conducting various educational briefings. After three retirements, Dr. Fee continued to offer his services by assisting with special projects for the government of Guam. His most recent work with the Guam Police Department included collaborating with the Peace Officer, the Peace Officer Standards and Training Post Commission to focus on a more competitive salary structure for Guam's police officers. In addition to improving the Guam Police Department's personnel and records management system, Dr. V's efforts meaningfully established the reality of Guam's public safety personnel and envisioned increases or increased compensation for all law enforcement officers. When yet be low, we see Dr. V, Komu Fafanabin, Hudishia, Gi Hudishian Guahan, 
Guido responsibly para in the education para in the Sia, then quatro cent to cinquenta and emplahon e coti, e second education kudisha, then locally in an atten e programan and a delanted professional. E halam lihang an I see her. Mahunga mangai manalago. Natal tau we e halam e quatin coti. Manyonyak si doctor fee. Para i menem plehau, siha komu ha apak i men magas, siha para uma nikwanaha. I halam i ena delantan i fwatan sotu. Para i komunida i militat, menyepi si doktor fi komu wita as the guy kong, edukasyon i base, gi i Anderson Air Force Base. Anaiha Azura Mas di Tresmit, the Manalto e Air Force, e Kanemblin Ganako, in a Delantin professional. Then the Nan Deferentis in a Tumu in education. His West di Ritural Tresbiahi. Hakan Tanuha si Dr. Fi, Umufresi, he said the Shonya. Komu Mana assisti then as the Shot now programma. Siha gi Gobinamentum Wama. Sumano yet mas tiapmentatina tetsonia, e department in Guahan, e department in police in Guahan, e an atumu talk to the peace officer standards and training post commission, e para ugafatin mas gai kompetenciana, a structuran swedu para e officia policihan Guahan siha. Fuera di hanamas. Malik is a stemming, Menanahan, Ian for Mashon, Iman Mutototsugi, I Department in Policihan, Guahan, Inana Alomia, Si Doctor Fi, Ume Establisia, Para Umagahe, I Menlinetna, Suben Abbas, Paratoru, I Emplahau, I Sanafan Guahan, then Paratoru Officiat, I Hinyanyanyo, I Lai. For his tremendous spirit of generosity to Guam's community, Dr. Fee received commendations and recognition from all three branches of Guam's government. From the Guam Legislature and Judiciary of Guam to the Executive Branch, and also the Department of Defense through the Anderson Air Force Base. His life work, which has been enduringly transformative and applauded around the nation and the world, will inspire generations of Guam's special education teachers, students, and families. He came to love Guam and his love for the island will continue to be born of his legacy, which will impact the development of professionals and training philosophies for a lifetime. Pudi Dinanklung, Espiritan, I Menakinya, Pari Kumanida Guahan, Harasibi Didakti Fi, in a Gradesi Siha, then recognition Ginen, Todui Tres Naramas, I Kubinamentan Guahan, I Lehas Laturan Guahan. Dani Hudishiat Guahan. Todu Hulu Pari Ramas Executivu, Dan Contodu, E Department in Defendi, Entry in Anderson Air Force Base. Todu in Tetsonia, Entry in Lenatlana, Nima Gulf Guaiza, Dan Malabiba, Gienteru in Ashwan, Dan Itanu, Bodhi Mentimi Laika, Siha. Sempre ha epic todo i hena rasyon ma estran dan ma estran espeshat na edukasyon guaman i estudianti dan familia siha. Ha sengwaiza guaman dan genen esti nagwanaiza. Sempre ma kentanuha i fenanagan i penalonia ni sempre penatsa i enadalantan i man profesional siha. Dan fenanagan i henengi siha. Paramona na lanalat siha. In witness whereof, I, Lourdes Haley Al Guerrero, Governor of Guam, and I, Joshua F. Tenorio, Lieutenant Governor of Guam, have set our hands and caused the great seal of Guam on this 28th day of September, and the year of our Lord, on a Domini 2021. Comus testigo guini, guagu si Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero, magahagen guagan, guahan, then si Joshua F. Tenorio, segundo magalahen guahan, in fitma esti nui kanai mami, then ina ma pega itat foi, na sedzen guahan, gi i kapitat na siudad hagadnya, gwini gi i di ha benti otsu, gi septembri, gi i saka ni sanyata, 
Another meaning does it mean to you or no? Thank you, Tika. Now I'd like to invite the Lieutenant Governor and the Fee family to accept the award at the front. Before we do that, Logan, uh, before we do that, I'd like to um, defer first to Senator Talina Nelson, the Majority Leader, uh, so she could uh, go ahead and um, offer her, uh, her words of condolences to the family. And then all three of us will make our presentations together. Is it okay if I read the resolution? Yeah. Okay. Anything, Senator Nelson? <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to thank the family for taking the time out to be here today. I know uh, uh, in these times it's it's a uh, it's a challenge uh, to deal with such a great loss. And so, um, on behalf of the 36th Guam Legislature and Senator Mary Camacho Torres, who is unable to make it, uh, we'd like to wish our deepest condolences for your father and your grandfather, their grandfather. Um, in the enormous contributions that they that he has made towards our island and towards the region of Oceania, um, truly a pioneer in a lot of the things that he has done, and he has touched thousands of lives, not only professionally but personally for their growth. And you know, I understand that the the work that he put also uh, uh, was a challenge for you as kids. Also, maybe you're not able to see him as much because he's helping the community. So, thank you for for sharing him with us. And so we'd like to read the resolution now. Relative to posthumously recognizing the late Dr. Richard W. Fee, educator and advocate for his immeasurable contributions to the community and for his countless hours working to make Guam a stronger and more just place to live. And extending sincere condolences to his family on his passing on behalf of the people of Guam. Be it resolved by the Committee on Rules of Imene Trentai Sais Nalisator in Guam, Whereas it is the sense of Ilis Latour and Guahan to honor the life and accomplishments of those distinguished citizens of this great island. And where it is the custom of Ilis Latour and Guahan to pay tribute to those individuals whose professional lives and civic endeavors have enhanced the basic humanity amongst all of us. Whereas attendant to such concern and in full accord with its longstanding tradition, Ilis Latour and Guahan is justly proud to honor the legacy of the late educator and advocate, Dr. Richard Fee. And Dr. Fee was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and lived there until the age of six when he, when he moved to Runamid, New Jersey where he spent his formative years. And upon graduating from Triton High School, he was accepted and attended the University of Oklahoma. And demonstrating an incomparable commitment to the field of education Dr. Fee acquired extensive degrees and certifications throughout his lifetime, including a Bachelor of Arts in History from the University of Oklahoma, a Council on Education of the Deaf, Teacher of Deaf Certif Certificate at the Oklahoma University of the Arts and Sciences, a Master's of Arts in Educational and Administration and Special Education Administration at California State University, a Master of Education in Curriculum at the University of Canberra, an educational specialist degree in vocation, vocational education with an emphasis in special education at the University of Idaho, a doctor of philosophy in special education and educational leadership at the University of Idaho, and a certified court manager certification from the Institute of Court Management in Williamsburg, Virginia. And upon graduating from the University of Oklahoma in 1968, Dr. Fee began his illustrious career when he accidentally stumbled into the Sunshine Cottage School for the Deaf in San Antonio, where he discovered his calling and received his certification to be a teacher for the deaf at the school. Whereas this work led him to Hong Kong, where he was hired as a private tutor who taught English using the auditory oral method of instruction. And eventually Dr. Fee made his way to Guam, where he taught deaf students at PD Middle School <coughs> which is now known as Jose Algerias Middle School. And beginning in 1974, Dr. Fee spent nearly a decade in Australia, where he played an invaluable role shaping the education sector as a researcher for the Australian Schools Commission, a lecturer in special education at the University of Western Sydney from 1974 to 1976, a lecturer in special education at the University of South Australia from 1977 to 1982, 
and a director at the Shepherd Center in Sydney, Australia from 1982 to 1983. And whereas in 1983, recognizing a need for individuals with disabilities and their families to plan for their future, Dr. Fee founded a nonprofit organization called the National Institute of Life Planning for Persons with Disabilities, now known as the National Center on Life Planning. And the organization provided critical services for parents and professionals on all aspects of life and established a network of life estate planners specializing in helping families with children, siblings, spouses, and parents with disabilities. And from 1996 to 1999, Dr. Fee served as a director of education at the Idaho School for the Deaf and Blind in Gooding, Idaho. And he was also an associate professor of special education and director of McMurray College in Jacksonville, Illinois from 1998 to 2001. From 2001 to 2006, Dr. Fee worked as an educational, educational consultant and director of the Educational Consultant Training Program at the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia, in, in Pennsylvania. And as a member of the pediatric implant team, Dr. Fee was the adjutant professor of implants at South College from 2002 to 2006 an adjunct professor of special education at the College of New Jersey from 2003 to 2004, and an associate professor on communication disorders and deafness at King University from 2004 to 2005. And to Guam, it's great benefit, Dr. Fee returned to Guam in 2006 until 2012 to serve as an associate professor of special education at the School of Education at the University of Guam. And while serving at the university, Dr. Fee held a, the position of chairperson for Masters of Education, where he successfully modified the master's program, leading to the growth of graduates in the program. And unsurprisingly, he was also elected to chair the Graduate Programs Committee and Academic Affairs Committee. And Within a span of three years, Dr. Fee presented major peer review papers at the National Audiological Conference in South Africa, the nation, National Implant Conference in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the Council for Exceptional Children Annual Conference in Seattle, Washington, the Pacific Educator Conference in Guam, and the, and the Philippians Institute of Medical Conference in Manila, Philippines, and Dr. Fee was also actively involved in the international education efforts of the benefits of Guam Special Education Program. And he conducted postgraduate courses at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila and Sur Province, University of Cancerous in Niga, Philippines, and as a recipient of the Distinguished Fulbright Senior Specialist Award, he hosted two weeks course at the University of Santo Tomas and the University of Philippines Additionally, his participation at Marnock Center at the University of Illinois in Chicago helped the University of Guam develop and improve its special education teacher preparation program. And in 2012, Dr. Fee accepted the position as, as assistant professor of education at the Lincoln University Graduate Center in Philadelphia, where he remained until his retirement in the late 20, 2014. He then returned to Guam to serve at the Base Education Advisory at Anderson Air Force Base from September 2014 to September 2015. And from September 2015 to December 2019, Dr. Fee was Judicial Educator at, for the Judiciary of Guam, administering educational and professional development programs for the judges and all 450 court employees. And most notably, was Dr. Fee's creation of the education programs that led to each law enforcement officer and the judicial branch becoming fully compliant with the Guam Peace Officer Standard and Training Law, which set the minimum standard for the training and certification for each classification of peace officers across the, each branch of government of Guam. And beloved by the courts for his leadership, Dr. Fee's retirement from the judiciary included a special send-off 
by the men and women of the Marshal Service and Probation Service Divisions. And despite his formal retirement, Dr. Fee remained an important voice in the community, often opining on the number of issues facing the island and continuing to educate and seeking to improve the recruitment, training, and regulations of local law enforcement personnel. And for all his efforts, Dr. Fee <laughs> has received commendations by both the Guam Legislature and the Judiciary of Guam for his outstanding contributions to the preparation of special education teachers for Guam and the community at large. And Dr. Fee passed away on August 28, 2021, and he is survived by his loving wife, Julie, his children and their partners, Danielle, John, James, Virginia, Andrew, Amanda, and Ashley, and his grandchildren, Beatrix, William, Ace, uh, Adelie, Ad, uh, Adeline, and our island joins them in mourning his passing. Whereas where indeed is the impressive dedication shown by an individual for the benefit of others, which Dr. Richard W. P. has displayed throughout his life. It is the sense of the legislature that when individuals of such noble aim and accomplishments are brought to our attention, they should be celebrated and recognized by all the residents of this great island. And now, therefore, be it resolved. That the Committee on Rules of Iman Aikantai Sais Nalisatoran Gohan does hereby, on behalf of Ilisatoran Gohan and the people of Guam, Posthumously, you recognize the late Dr. Richard W. Fee, educator and advocate for his immeasurable contributions to the community and for his countless hours of working to make Guam a stronger and more just place to live and to extend sincere condolences to his family on his passing on behalf of the people of Guam. And be it further resolved that the speaker and the chairperson of the Committee on Rules certify and the legislative secretary attest to the adoption hereof and that copies of the same be therefore thereafter transmitted to the family of the late Dr. Richard W. Fee and to the Honorable Lourdes A. Leong Guerrero, E. Magahagan Guahan. So thank you again for, for sharing your father and grandfather with us. Do you want to say something? Uh, I had um, several personal meetings with, with uh, Dr. Fee, and he was uh, very instrumental in helping us create this measure, which eventually became a public law, which we were discussing earlier. His compassion was, was always there. And as a man, uh, though he may have had difficulties during his life, uh, he expressed it so little, but his main, his main concern was to ensure the helping, helping the people of Guam, and especially the peace officers. So his legacy uh, shall continue. And thank you very much for having allowed me, at least I had that opportunity to meet this wonderful man. So God bless you. Thank you, Senator. Senators. At this time, I'd now like to give the floor to Chief Justice Carlito for the presentation of the judicial resolution. Excuse me. We're going to do the post commission for the presentation of the certificate. Uh, okay. To the family of the late Dr. Richard Fee. Um, as you can see uh, around you, there's, it, it's words of love. Um, uh, many of us had the opportunity to talk with him one-on-one. -on -one. Um, he really was such a loving man and words cannot really express uh, how we feel knowing that he, he's setting us off on a path towards correcting something. You know, challenges that we face within the, the post commission and and uh, law enforcement you don't understand the gravity of, of some of the things that we face on law enforcement but, and your 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 father your grandfather uh, they he just took it took the bull by the horns and he he said we're gonna we're gonna uh, march on and uh he said it as it was and so on behalf of the peace officers standard and training commission uh, we have several representatives uh, from from the post commission, and some of them are watching online. So, of course, we have Bob Camacho, who is the interim executive director. We have Manny Chong, who represents the chief, who was the uh, former chairperson, and Miss Lottie Brennan as the former co-chair. 
And I am now stepping into some big shoes to fill. And uh, although there's a gap left uh, because of your father and his initiative, we have actually a, a very good roadmap as to where we want to go and how we want to get there. The biggest loss, though, is that we don't have his knowledge or expertise or or I think even his finesse to be able to, to get us from where we are now to where we need to be. But on behalf of the post commission, I'm just going to read this out and then we'll, we'll present it, I guess, as a whole. So this is a certificate of appreciation and commendation to Dr. Richard W. Fee, PhD, the Guam Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission hereby recognizes and co commends Dr. Richard Fee for his outstanding contributions in the professional development of all peace officers on the island of Guam. His exemplary service to public safety and to the island community is truly noteworthy and deserves high recognition. Dr. Richard Fee's untiring dedication and unrelenting commitment is a shining example of all for all those in public service. So recognized on the 28th of September, 2020, 21, Vincent S. Perez and Robert Camacho, Post Commission. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to call the Lieutenant Governor and the Fee family for the presentation of the order of tomorrow. No, then I will invite Chief Justice Carbolito and Chief Majority Leader and Senator Moreland as well. Justice, So to um, the family, uh, so to the children, um, and on behalf of uh, and representing you now, Julie, um, it is my deepest honor, my highest honor to present to you the highest uh, recognition that the government of Guam can provide to any non tomorrow that has contributed so greatly to the development, the growth, and the prosperous future of our island. On behalf of our people, we sincerely thank you. Thank you for your father's legacy. Thank you for your sacrifice um, as children in allowing um, your dad to touch so many lives on Guam. It's with our deepest sympathy that we provide this recognition and it's my honor to present this to you. And I think I will, knowing your dad, I'm going to present it to you. <laughs> Justice. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And uh, Justice uh, Torres is uh, participating uh, virtually here. And we have some of our managers here present uh, today. I have highlighted the essence of this uh, Judicial Council resolution. Uh, which expresses our uh, sincere appreciation for the contributions that your father has made and the um, impression that he has made uh, with the judiciary and the impact, uh, the tremendous impact uh, that he has uh, left behind, as you can hear, um, in, in, in terms of the community. Uh, and we stand with you and we are so proud of his many achievements and um and, and we offer our condolences and, and express our sympathy on the passing of your father and so please accept this resolution on behalf of the, the judicial council and your hands are full so i'm going to thank you very much thank you and offer our sincere condolences on behalf of the princess guam legislature and our island community for the enormous amount of work that your father has done, um, and also for your support in the work that he has done for, for our island. So thank you very much. And Senator, why don't you get to <laughs> Thank you.
Once again, thank you for um, allowing us the opportunity to uh, thank you for loaning us your father. Of course, we mourn his loss as you do. Uh, but on behalf of the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, uh, would you anyone like to say something before? Okay. Um, so on behalf of the Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, we'd like to offer a very small, simple token of our appreciation for your father. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Annie and Lonnie want to come on this side. But they want to take a group photo. <laughs> okay, now three, one, two, three. We'd like to invite anybody else who'd like to come up for a photo as well at this time. Logan, before we do that, can we ask sure. them, um, the two families they have any words? Sure. Um, I'd like to invite the family to say any words if anybody would like to. Oh, uh, we just wanted to say thank you to all of you for, uh, on behalf of our father and our family, uh, for the, these tremendous honors. Uh, it's been overwhelming and humbling and inspiring to to uh, hear the praise of our father and the sheer amount of work that he did. We knew that he was always working. This has been a lot. Um, and uh, I know my children are, are not you know, ready to understand all of this, and I don't think they can right now, but I know in the future we can show them. And that will help us explain what kind of man he was and uh, what kind of person they should aspire to be. So, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now conclude our ceremony with a group photo. Uh, we would like to thank everyone for joining us for today's ceremony in honor of the late Dr. Richard Fee. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs>